Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 215 of G.I. Joe Berg, and we're talking the collection that was. As always, I'm joined by... Smivo from Australia. And... and Robo from Cape Town. Hey! And that well, is correct. So we're attempting tonight, guys. <laughs> 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 it's Paul over here. And yeah, guys, uh, what's been happening? How is everybody? Are we good? Are we happy? Are we healthy? What's what's crackalacking? Yeah, Cape Town is uh, is it's nice and cold today. Um, we had a couple of warmer days for a little bit there, but it's it's cold again, and I'm quite enjoying it. It's nice to have an excuse to stay inside. Not that I need one, but <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, doing doing pretty good, I think. And in a land down under, we are currently sleep training my child. So if I have to suddenly dip out, you know what I'm doing. I'm walking into the nursery and pat, pat, patting this little boy until he passes out again. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> this is how you sleep. <laughs> it's you must true. now sleep. Yeah, train him. Train him. Yeah. It's crazy oh, that we have to guys, train kids to sleep, right? We just lost the rugby. Oh, Fuck. What do you mean? Do you mean Australia lost or? <laughs> no, South Africa. <laughs> uh, I, I, I wish. I, no, actually, lost. no. I suppose in this instance, I wish I was saying we and referring to Australia, but no, South Africa has just lost by two points. Ah, oh, enough. Yeah. Anyways, next weekend, uh, the Boca play the uh, Kiwis in the stadium in town here, and Kim and I Ooh. have tickets. So hey. the, Jab the Jabba family will be attending. That is the news. Nice. We're gonna yeah. look. We're gonna look for you on the TV screen. Hopefully, yeah. I'll be the rabbit's foot to that match. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe little Elliot will bring some good luck with him. Because yeah, the box could do with a win, <laughs> and uh, taking on the, the All Blacks is always going to be a tall order. Um, oh, oh, for sure. I mean, they completely obliterated mine. Australia a while ago. Jeez. It's yeah, I know. Bad news. But it uh, turns out uh, an old industry mate of mine sang the national anthem this evening at the Rugby. <gasps> oh, cool. Coast. Yeah. A guy called Grant Almirol played Frankie Valley in Jersey Boys. Oh, but cool. Been in a string of shows. He did Singing in the Rain, playing the lead. Oh, cool. Yeah. He, uh, he emigrated, I think, uh, this year, in fact. Huh. Yeah, well, madness. I know, madness. right? But, gentlemen... The usual segment. Shall we kick things off what? with some new shit? Who's got yeah, what new shit has everybody got? Yay. Oh. Wah, 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 wah. Sorry. Guys. <laughs> I knocked off one of my wishlist items for 2021. Whoa. I got it. <gasps> so one of my what? fives. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. I mean, not in hand, but if you oh. think about it, my collection is now a virtual collection. <laughs> so I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break my little rule and gush about a toy that I don't physically possess at the moment, but is mine. Um, I actually had it sent to my brother because I got it from eBay UK, uh, and he has confirmed its contents. It's in phenomenal condition. Does anyone want to hazard a guess as to what I got? Uh, in hmm. the comments, please, guys, go for it. Go <laughs> when crazy. I say in the comments, yeah, actually, in the comments and for our live audience. Um, let's see what you got. Paul, I'm not going to wait that long. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just fun for, it's right fun for, for, for our listeners when they, when they do listen to this. Damn. All right. We've got a response from Gaz. He says the sky striker. Mm hmm. Good call. Oh, good call. That was on the top five. Guess. Definitely. Robbie, you're going to, you're going to mm. stem song with Gaz. Hans uh, also says sky striker. Swivel arm stalker. <laughs> I picked that up in Dublin in 2014. God darn it. Okay. Sorry, Carl. Damn it. I'm also going to hazard a guess with the uh, Sky Striker because uh, of how excited brilliant. you sound about it. So. <laughs> hey, man, this is the wish list after all. Any of these items would be exciting, but indeedy, it's the Sky Striker. Whoa. Yay. I'm so glad it's not uh, an, an, a Tiger Force Outback because I would start crying. <laughs> 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 Guys, not only is it a Sky Striker, but it is the Action Force version. So mm -hmm. instead of the US Air Force symbols, it's got the the star and tricolor. Very, very nice. 
Not only that, but two things that jumped out at me with this auction. Firstly, Both the flints? <laughs> yes, it came with two bonus flints. Um, I mean, if you... Rob, you've got a flint. Hey, no, Rob's finally. already got a flint, and so do I. So bonus flints for... for both know, of us. Parts. Hey. Giveaways <laughs> for parts, exactly. <laughs> um, two things jumped out at me about this auction. One, the stickers are immaculately applied. Like, you know, the, the sort of the black um, edging that goes around the cockpit always mm -hmm. gets kind of rumpled. Mm. Well, not in this case. Whew. And I mean, we've done this stickering on the 30th anniversary, and it's, it's tough to do, tough to get it It's smooth. not easy at all, yeah. Mm. But this is smooth. The other stickers are incredibly applied as well. And I think we can all agree that there are a lot of Sky Strikers out there with wonky stickers. I mean, this was a very popular toy. I'm sure a lot of kids attempted it. The stickering on it is difficult. There are a lot of very stickers flipsy, that kind flopsy. Of almost overlap. They're so tightly applied. So like, and also to line them up with an aircraft fuselage, which is already kind of curvaceous in places, like to get that symmetry and to get all that lettering facing the right way. Tough, very tough, time consuming. Well, this specimen had someone very lovingly put in the time. The other thing that jumped out at me, the canopy is crystalline. This is a 40 year old toy, almost. <laughs> and you know, the ca canopy glass is always kind of scuffy in places. This one mm -hmm. looks, it looks like it just came out of its box. So I was only too happy to overlook the parts that were missing. Um, I need to source two fins, which <laughs> I realize are actually pretty tough to get, um, and the bombs and missiles. Though I think the 30th anniversary missiles are interchangeable, and they certainly hold better on the original's um, mounts than, than the 30th anniversary. I mean, I'm sure you can all remember how stumpy those mounts were, um, so the missiles would just fall off. Hans, but, Hans reckons it's been treated. He had put his money on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I would, I would buy that, except the stickers are so perfect. So, mm. uh, I, I think this is actually, and and the fuselage is so white and gleaming, like it's proper pretty, guys. Proper pretty. Even those flints look good. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Can you believe? This was an uncontested auction. What the hell? I got it at the start price of sixty pounds. Oh my word! Oh my goodness! And no <laughs> one, wow. and the guy didn't. I mean, he didn't be like, oh, no one, no one else bought it. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna give this to you. Uh, fortunately, this this guy wasn't a douchebag like that. I mean, I have had <laughs> that happen in the past, which is ridiculous. It kind of violates eBay's own rules. Um, yeah, but fortunately, no, it all worked out. The landing gear works. Oh, I probably need to source another spring because my brother does tell me that the one, the uh, landing gear door doesn't s snap back. But, uh, you know, I I'm not going to chew the seller out for not disclosing that because he probably didn't know any better, to be honest. It sounds mm. like this guy was a, like an antiques dealer and not a specifically a toy dealer. Certainly his other listings are uh. not toy related at all, which probably is why I got it for a song. Anyways, guys, that is, yeah, I'm over the moon. Well, that, <laughs> that certainly blows out anything new I got this week. Jeez. Oh, no. That's absolutely get, insane, dude. Did you get The Shining? The dude? I, I, I got Shining, yeah. Um, the Paul, 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 Paul kindly nagged me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you gotta get this thing come on dude you gotta get you, you gotta get it yes i do and do it, do also, it now it's not just the normal one it's actually the chase version so it's the frozen version of him <gasps> which That's is even amazing better. because now i have I two think. dead person pops which i think is pretty cool <laughs> oh okay so i have uh laura from twin peaks and i have a dead jack torrance so that's pretty amazing that is pretty amazing on the topic of Funko Pops, I um, <laughs> popped into my, well, there's a game store at Cresta that I often, I mean, I don't often buy from them, but I know the guys there, so I often go and talk a bit of shit with them. And every now and then, if they have a secondhand game, I'll pick it up. Um, 
and uh, they they stock a lot of Funko Pops. And you know, I didn't buy any, and I won't buy any. But I, I've got to say, <laughs> the Optimus Prime and the Megatron Pop actually look pretty good. Like they they're pretty cool looking as far as pops go. So that kind of caught my eye. I was like, oh. And then I thought of you, Rob. And I was like, hmm, Rob would be proud of me right now for looking at this Megatron and <laughs> Optimus Prime. Pop. And not throwing up in your mouth a little bit. <laughs> not throwing up in my mouth a little, yeah. And I wouldn't even have known they were there except for Celia picking up a um, a Grogu pop that had a little bit of a half-eaten creature in its mouth. And, oh, that's uh, cute, she, though. Yeah, she thought that was pretty cute. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty cute. But, I mean, you know, my brain is like, you know... It's Grogu. Grogu's great. It's just, you know, it's the, it's, the, it's Disney's new marketing darling. So, but I mean, it is actually a good looking pop to be fair. And then I was like, what is that? And I was like, picked up Megatron. I was like, he looks so cool. And just next to him was He-Man, <laughs> which I also oh, didn't pick up. <laughs> you need to, you need to cook up a theme tune for that. He bug, yeah. You know, yeah. I'll yeah. I'll work it out. This was the coolest toy in South Africa. He man, no he bug. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, on the topic of of that quickly of uh, on Motu, just want to squeeze that in there. Uh, there was some Motu convention thing. Uh, this is how, uh, and they showed off some of the next uh, waves for Origin. And I'm very, very excited because my favorite Skeletor of all time is being released in that uh, wave. It's the Terra Claws Skeletor that brings back so many great memories because uh, my mom once got home and surprised me with Terra Claw Skeletor. Uh, yeah, thanks, mom. Uh, she is so cool at always getting me the bad guys. So I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> hey. surprise from my mom was like a bad guy <laughs> which is great guy. yeah um <laughs> <laughs> because i i mean clearly it was a case of you know all the he-mans were, were sold out right so yeah. you know if my mom had asked a sales assistant they were like oh yeah i just get him a skeleton or something or my mom maybe my mom is just cool like that and she just saw skeleton and thought oh he looks pretty rad like you know my son will like something with a skull face instead of you know <laughs> blondie over there so she, maybe that was her thinking. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, that, that was a little bit of exciting news. Um, I've got something cool that's new to talk about. Uh, and it's thanks to Mr. Creech, uh, to MC, uh, ACDC, MCDJ, uh, MCDJ, ACDC, something like that. <laughs> something like that. Uh, he very, uh, very, very lovingly uh, picked up a um, retro collections stalker for me from uh, they were ah. they appeared at his local and he asked me if i wanted anything and i was like i kind of do want a stalker because <laughs> uh, that you know we spoke about it quite a lot and to this date i still don't have an actual um green as mean stalker in that line i've only ever got the modern interpretations i don't have a cool 25th anniversary looking one and that's like and the the retro one i think is like the best one to get so that was very cool so uh mc dj acdc thank you so much my man really 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 appreciate that other than that uh nothing new and i'm actually quite happy to <laughs> report that um what i have been able to do is enjoy the toys that i've recently acquired which has been cool i've been really getting into my jazz and into hot rod and just having a lot of fun with those i've been posing uh uh, what you call it, uh, He-Man toys around the house, Transformers around the house, um, and doing it in a very selective way, in a very specific way as to, well, to be fair, Celia doesn't get annoyed by it, but, uh, you know, you don't want to overplay your hand here. So that was fun. We were cleaning out the house the other day, and I was just like, yay, uh, I think this corner could do with some Motu and some Transformers. So they're in the lounge at the moment. <laughs> Isn't the best part, <clears throat> like, moving into a place? is spying little nooks where you can get a little diorama or a setup going. Right. I love it. I love it. I love it too. I, it's it's such a great thing. I've recently just inherited the, uh, I've inherited Elliot's nursery because we just moved him into one room. There's no way a small human that small needs two places. So like, <laughs> oh, it's so nice to be surrounded by toys again, friends. I As I sit here podcasting, I've got shit hanging off the walls I've got boxes on like windowsills. 
I've got my tomahawk on a table all to itself. Wild so Weasel cool. is sitting at the controls of the Beast Bomber by Lenard. And to be honest, since Wild Weasel looks a lot more like a classic, classic kind of pilot, just done up in red, um, putting him in something that looks retro and throwbacky and vintage like the Beast Bomber, that works, man. And there's a, that bit in his file card about him being, you know, the kind of pilot who, like, basically graduated from everything from sophisticated jet fighters to then like hedge hoppers that have like rocket pods strapped to them i know this isn't the exact wording on the file card but the sense that i got from it that he he participated in conflicts where he flew whatever you know jury rigged warplanes that were just like crop dusters so yeah he works man he works in the whole beast um anyway it's nice to be surrounded by toys again Whew. Great. That is really yeah. great news. Um, <laughs> yeah, that no, dude, I'm very happy because it's, it. it's, it's a thing like I've also only really started feeling like this is my home, when I've been able to put my toys in a place that I feel is safe or just presentable. They're not just lying around somewhere or in boxes in the cupboard or in boxes in the study. You know, they're actually out. I mean, I've got mine on my desk. But it's great. You know, it's a great feeling that you know, to have a home for them uh, in your home. You know, so I feel you on that, dude. Robbie, are you really digging your shining pop? Have you taken taken him out of the box? Yeah, does I did. it look uh, as cool I, in the back as it does on the front? Absolutely, he looks much better from the back, actually. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's just nice. Sometimes they do they do bother to do little details, you know. So like his jacket is actually very nicely um textured. I mean, not his jacket, his jersey. Um, and yeah, yeah. and he has pockets in his jeans, so that's kind of cool. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of cool to actually own a new, it's almost a toy, but I mean. <laughs> Dude, you're playing with it. It's a toy, man. Don't worry. Exactly. Don't listen to us, to us old codgers who are like, hey, it's not an action figure. It's not a it toy. It doesn't you have more with than, it. it has to have at least four points of articulation. Well, this one has one and that's more than enough. <laughs> no, don't listen to that Paul guy. He's all like Funko Pops of pollution. <laughs> 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 He's an asshole. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Um, right, I've had about enough pop talk as I can stand. Gentlemen, what are you watching? What are you reading? What are you playing? I'm going to kick this one off and throw a question at you both. Who oh, here Lord. caught the Slaughterhouse Wrestling Championship second bout between ding, ding. Macho Monkey Wrench and Vega the Snake? <laughs> uh, I did. I, I managed to catch a bit of it. Uh, I was there for the premiere. You were at the premiere, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I caught it very... uh, a little bit after the premiere, and well, the link will be in the description below. But I really would love for everyone listening to this to give it a watch because I think Zazel has surpassed GI Joburg standards for play motion. If you oh my look God. at the way yeah. he's got these figures moving, the 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 authentic wrestling moves that they execute, the way they make their entrances. I'm just sitting there thinking, this is incredible. Like, you know, tech decks, right? People who yeah. actually take these mini skateboards and pull off authentic tricks with their fingers. Well, I'd say that is exactly what Zazel has pioneered with his wrestling videos. He is manipulating these figures so authentically and f the framing is so good it's it it's he's done his homework firstly and secondly he has worked his ass off in the studio as it were to to perfect it to get it right because it really tells it really shows um it was a treat to watch anyways I also, that's my I also take. love his angles man he's got such great angles in his productions uh, like it, it just something as sort of straightforward as guys arriving. Um, and okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to brag a bit. I got to, to do some Mercer lines at the door, you know, like I'm a bouncer and, uh, <laughs> but just that shot is really, really cool. Like for a very basic shot, he made it really interesting. And I really, really dug that. I also love his, uh, the music that accompanies it. <laughs> it, it really reminds me of Desperado. <laughs> Um, but I know it's supposed to sell the whole Vega angle, 
Which brings Jimmy, me to... I thought you were about to big up yourself because you provided a, pr a track for his video, didn't you, Paul? Oh, yeah, I believe he's using Altitude for the end. Yeah, that was Indeed. one of the tracks that he uses. But, dude, uh, and sorry, I mean, this is not supposed to be a circle joke, but i got to say your Vega is freaking impressive, man. <laughs> Like, and Rob tenders a, a scoop impersonation. Yes. So, guys, if you needed any more incentive other than just to watch impressive new play motion, scroll on down, hit that link, watch it immediately, or, you know, listen to us and then watch it afterwards, or listen to it now and listen to it again. I mean, watch it now watch and it. then watch it again <laughs> later. <laughs> Once and can I just podcast. say, can Mattel please send this man... And I'm referring to Zazel from Sergeant Slaughter Slaughterhouse. Mattel, please send him all those really cool Motu wrestling figures that you got. He would do the coolest stuff with that. And I just feel that he would elevate that to a whole new level. I mean, that's already a very cool idea. And that is the man to really put a spotlight on that and to really make those toys shine. So please, Mattel, if you hear me, do it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll ask him to send you an email. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say he could probably do the commercials, but like all his kids are too old. Like, you know how He-Man commercials always kind of mixed like parents in with the kids. Like, oh, I'm going to play a Skeletor. No, I'm going to be He-Man and I'm going to take Castle Grayskull. I don't know. It's something along those lines. But like, say those kids are like late teens and early 20s. <laughs> <laughs> that man got started early. Any huge. So, hey, yes, why not? highly recommended and check it out. Waste no time. Anybody else watching or reading or playing anything cool? Okay, well, I am uh, slightly chomping at the bit to watch Shang-Chi uh, because it's a martial arts Marvel movie. So, I'm like totally sold on that. I'm very excited about that. But what I actually did get to watch um, this past week was a movie called Crazy Rich Asians. Now, I know it's like, oh, Paul, that came out like forever ago. But <laughs> uh, I finally, it was on Netflix and I was like, cool, I've been dying to see this film. And I really enjoyed it. That's what I watched. I watched Crazy Rich Asians. And then I've been spotting in a bit of Brooklyn Nine-Nine because I absolutely love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Nine-Nine. And um, yeah, that's been me uh, this whole week uh, <laughs> watching wise. Uh, you guys, anything cool, Steve? Hey, man. I have just started reading The Lonely War of Captain Willie Schultz. Are you familiar with this comic book? No. No. Well, it's it's a, a comic strip from the 60s. It tells the story of a American soldier in the North African campaign of World War II who is uh, wrongly accused of shooting a superior officer and is sentenced to death. But this particular captain uh, speaks fluent German so he escapes from his sentence uh, and his you know, imminent doom by infiltrating enemy lines and donning a German uniform and just falling in with the Wehrmacht. So he's an American soldier now, like actually a member of the German army fighting against the allies in North Africa. And it is a fascinating read. Um, most specifically because it was written by a guy who was only 16 years old at the time. Insane. Oh my word. His name wow. is, is Will Franz. The art was by a guy called Sam Glansman. But here's the rub. Back in the day, this was a rather controversial book um, for obvious reasons. I mean, you know, telling the story of an American who's essentially fighting alongside the Germans um, and, and being constantly in these very difficult like ethical situations like is he pulling his punches all the time what about the horrifying moments where he he might in fact end the life of a member of the allies like how how does he keep up the pretense and and not murder his own men like stuff like that is going down constantly the author was also i think accused of being a communist i mean this is the 60s it was the wow. red scare like 
you didn't have to do too much wrong to kind of be on the outs. So yeah, as the story goes, teacher. this book <laughs> was never completed. The story of Captain Willie Schultz was never finished. Flip forward to 2018. I think it was 2018. Anyways, they successfully funded it. Um, they got a Kickstarter going and, and they reached their goal. So they have finished this tome, this book, and put it all together in a collected edition with the original stories and then the new ending. Um, of course, in the interim, the original artist, Sam Glansman, has, per has, has passed away. It's very it's perishable. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm thinking a lot about this comic book and the way they kind of phrase things. But anyways, um, Sam Glansman is no longer with us. So uh, a very capable artist uh, and very um, analogous artist who's been able to emulate Sam's art style called Wayne Van Zandt finished his work. So as I say, a fascinating read. I'm kind of at the early stages of it, but yeah, it's good. It's good. Very good. Ooh, that actually that does unusual, sound amazing. Unusual yeah. war story. Yeah. Shit, that sounds like it's going to be a TV series soon, like an HBO Max thing or whatever. I know, right? I mean, it's got that vibe. Yeah. It's even rare today to see war stories from the German point of view. Hmm. I suppose it's not strictly speaking the German point of view because you're still using this American soldier mm. as your point of view, as your as your lens. But yeah, as I say, you know, just it, it humanizes the quote unquote enemy. And like mm. the German army the German army weren't the Nazis. They weren't the bad guys. They were just a national army who had their orders. No, yeah. not necessarily. They didn't have to believe in Hit like what Hitler wanted or, or or the plans that that he had for the Reich. They just, you know, they were members of the army, and this is this is the fight. Anyway, I've, I'm not trying to sympathize or, or or. No, no, but it's 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 cool. Like I I get where you're coming from, man. Mm -hmm. Sorry, like um, I I always enjoy that kind of thing as well, uh, because it's. It's fair to see it from both sides. And uh, I've often, I mean, as much as I despise Nazis, um, I've also often, you know, I remember when I used to work at Anime Works as well, when Medal of Honor came out and, uh, you know, people would be like, you know, Nazi this, Nazi that. And I think Medal of Honor 2 actually has a sec uh, section where you get to see it from the perspective of a, a German officer and um the game was also trying to say like listen not everybody in the nazis was drinking the kool-aid not all of them were behind this concept so it was it's an interesting thing like that's cool sweet anyway rob have you remembered what you are what you did this weekend you yes party this week <laughs> oh yeah i finally remembered i watched i started watching something called the marvel anime x-men um animated series and i've gone through like i think two episodes so far I think it's pretty good. I mean, the animation is quite nice. Um, and up front, they're fighting against the, the U-Men or something. Not that I know who the U-Men are, but... It, I think yeah. it was made for the anime. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> well, yeah, so far, it's, it's, it's quite cool. I mean, like, it, the whole thing starts off with, like, Jean Grey dying and then, like, you know, the team having to come back together to kind of, like, you know, fight against these, you know, people trying to kill mutants again. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm kind of enjoying that so far. And I managed to find a website that has, that seems to have archived um, all of the Battle Action Force comic books. So I've started oh. reading those. Does it rhyme um, with Blood for the Baron? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did someone mention that last week? Maybe no, actually, I, uh, that may have happened. Um, but uh, Steve, I think you recently posted it on Facebook. Uh, somebody was asking. And you posted a link on Facebook for that. But yes, on both counts. We did definitely uh, speak yeah. about it last week, Robbie. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, no, because I was mm -hmm. wondering, like, how did I discover this website? I even wrote it down. I'm just taking my notes now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but then I independently found it anyway. Rob, um, so I've, are yes. you suffering from the same uh, malady that Guy Pierce has in Memento? You know, Chris Nolan's Memento, where, like, you're living life in reverse. You kind of... 
you have to keep reminding yourself by having post-it notes and Polaroid pictures of like <laughs> stuff that you should remember. Hey, <laughs> is that what's happening? I suppose we could be getting to that point at this like, at, the, at this point. <laughs> like moment to moment, you need to keep reminding yourself of what you know already. <laughs> and, and then <laughs> by process of elimination, figure out what is new information. That's like, funny. <laughs> oh, I have it on my notes here that, yes, we spoke about it last week. So, okay, that's old information. Okay, give me something new. Very funny. No, I make notes during episodes. So, that, you know, like if you say something interesting, I should try and remember it. <laughs> but then, you know, I don't know. But um, I, think I that's found great, the first dude. issue interesting. Um, it, it's kind of cool. And it's interesting. They have like different um, forces within the action force because I really don't know anything about action force at all. Um, so there's like a Q force. This is what like I think there was a Z force and a Z space force. force. Um, and it's kind of cool that they're taking their own story. You know, they, it's a co completely different story from what GI Joe is, which I think is quite cool. Um, oh, I've got so many questions for you, Rob. But I think I'll settle for now, just asking which of the divisions do you like the most? Uh, the out of Z is force, the SAS. Oh yes, the SAS. They were the guys who dropped from Space Force in this issue. Um, I think probably SAS because I mean they they seem to be the coolest ones. Like they kind of like you know they infiltrate the island and they take out a couple of guys and then everyone forgets about them for like a couple of pages. <laughs> the Baron's like, I can't believe I forgot about the SAS. Ah, they're still killing all my people. <laughs> <laughs> so I think so far the SAS because I mean space was. You should taken be taking quite notes. Easily. <laughs> exactly, you should be. <laughs> <laughs> So, the like, Space Force got taken out quite easily. I think it was Q Force was the boat force, they're the Navy. So, I mean, they mm. essentially just circled the island a bunch of times, even though they did capture someone at the start of the story. Um, was this Atoll Z? Assault on, was it Assault on Atoll I think Z? it is. It's, I believe yeah. it's the very first story. Um, yes. But it's very difficult to read on a computer, though, because, like, I can't zoom in. So, like, mm. I'm, like, I have to lean really far forward or I have to blur it on my phone, and then I kind of, like, lose... I don't know. I think the way that they tell the stories, the panel layout is a little bit different from the conventional pa panel layout of like American comic books. I mean, it still goes across, obviously, but sometimes because of the way that they kind of loosely connect panels, sometimes it confuses me. So I'm still getting into the rhythm of reading them, or at least you know, or at least understanding the the, the visual language of like how do you actually read these correctly. No, I feel you. I'm going to possibly blow your mind slightly. But mm. next time you read them, pay very close attention to the use of sound effects. Ooh. Hmm. Okie dokie. I, I, I'm going to do that. Well, I mean, I'm looking forward to, yeah, this week reading a lot more. So I think second up will be Iron Blood's Revenge. So we'll see how he reven revenges himself on the people who stop him from murdering an entire island of people. <laughs> All I'm Crazy. saying, man, Operation Bloodhound. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm just sure glad they didn't call it. stories are hard as hell. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's it's cool that they've taken their own, you know, they've they've gone in their own direction with this, which which I find quite cool. If, you know, and they've thought about it ahead of time as well. I'm glad you brought up Action Force, Rob. Uh, just quickly while I have you, with that is uh, because <laughs> Shang Chi is going? coming out. <laughs> just quickly. Well, you know, <laughs> no, no, I've just I've got him in the in the the, the Action Force. Lane. Oh, you here, Rob? <laughs> um, but there are, uh, but with Shang Chi and whatever's coming out on cinema, and it's out there and and it's doing its thing. Uh, I do recall seeing Shang Chi in Action Force comics. Hmm. Mm. I believe it's Shang Chi and uh, Quick Kick do something together. They're on a mission. I, can't, I don't know if it's in GI Joe co a continuity or if it's uh, Quick Kick joining Shang Chi in, you know. Uh, UK Marvel continuity, but there is uh, there is overlap there. I remember seeing that. I think Jim uh, showed me that. I think it was Jim. Probably was Jim that showed me that like a long time ago. And I was like, whoa. So I think <laughs> Shang-Chi was a backup story in Action Force Weekly, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and there are original stories featuring Quick Kick and he references Shang-Chi as a martial artist that he has an awareness of. Cool. Um, yes, but if I'm misremembering, 
Scroll on down to the comments section and give it to me in the ear holes, please. Yeah, if you haven't already. <laughs> uh, Gary has cool. saved my butt in the comments. He tells me that Quick Kick was trained by Shang-Chi in Action Force. So there you ah. go. Master of Kung Fu ah. is directly responsible for Quick Kick's training. Which is kind of badass. Lovely. That is kind of cool. The, the way Quick Kick's like backstory is just totally bogus and, and needs some fleshing out. It needed that. It needed a serious martial artist to be his trainer. Because like him just being a stunt guy in Hollywood and then all of a sudden being a member of G.I. Joe. Um, okay. It's a little suspicious. It's almost like it's a cover-up of some sort. Yes, absolutely. We have on this podcast like bantered about the fact that it probably was a cover story. But then we need to get the classified information. Like... Who is responsible for this guy? Like, what is his, you know, what is his MO? Is he a deep cover agent? Like, was he working Hollywood just as some kind of cover? I know I tried to do some of that in Bad Luck Lady. Like, yes, he's using the film industry, but he's actually an undercover agent rooting out Cobra Cells. So, so go Action Force Weekly for uh, adding some strings to that quick kick bow. Boom. But, uh, yeah to to cut a few strings on the quick kick bow <laughs> uh, i had a pretty scary experience this week uh that was toy toy related uh, not like life related thank god um <clears throat> i uh i've recently uh received a parcel uh and, well actually it wasn't it was this week and last week but it's funny how this all happened so i, I shot a small play motion thing for a um so like an unboxing type vibe that I'm doing. And uh, yes, I know Steve and Rob, I need to get your lines to you. Sorry, uh, that's happening. I just had to string and edit the video properly. So that's finally there so I can actually get it to you all. Anyway, um, I had uh, pulled out, I, I have a, a few select Joes that I keep in a special box um, because they are very difficult to replace if something happens to them. And all they are just very precious to me. And uh, what had happened is I took out some of these Joes while I was in the lounge. Uh, Celia and I were watching stuff, whatever, or just chilling or eating or whatever. Anyway, I had these Joes out and I put them in, in the vehicles and whatever. And then um, <clears throat> left it at that, didn't think much. And uh, this week uh, we were sort of just going through the house. I mean, as you do, like, you know, periodically you go through your house and you clean it and you do your thing and whatever. And um, yeah. Two days ago, I see this small plastic object on the floor, and I'm like, what is that? And I look close, and I'm like, oh, my God, it's Scoop's helmet with the, with the, the, the microphone in it. And I went Beautiful. ice cold. I was like, and, I, and to think that I almost lost Scoop's helmet, um, that freaked me out. That was like, that, yeah, because I'm, I'm super meticulous about gear and things, and I can't understand how it got there and how it got past me. Um, thank goodness it's my house and that I clean. So thankfully, wow, I found that. But then it got me thinking about like uh, GI Joes and toys that I've had in my life um, that I've somehow lost uh, through either, uh, you know, negligence, uh, shitty friends, uh, what have you. And then this is what birthed this topic. And this is the, the collection that was, was, was. So... Yeah, I, if you've spent any time uh, working behind the counter in a comic store or spent any time in a comic store long enough, and Rob, I'm sure you can relate to this, you will hear many stories of guys that are like, uh, I'm looking for this thing or looking for that thing or this comic in particular because I used to have them all. And then, you know, my grandparents, wife, husband, auntie, uncle, caregiver, uh, orphan, you know, manager sold off all my toys or got rid of them or gave them to charity or something. And it's always like, it's a gut punch whenever you hear stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I've heard stories. I've, I've heard both sides of the story. I've heard stories where guys have had like, they've gone about their massive He-Man collection, for example, that, you know, when they left the house or whatever, or when uh, they went to university, their parents just gave away to all of their cousins and, and whatever. So they don't have it anymore. And you know, and they reckon that's why they still collect toys. I've also heard the other side where when they left for university, the mom actually went and collected all of the GI, uh, I mean, GI Joe and Star Wars and He-Man toys and meticulously organized them all in little baggies. 
and kept them in a box for him. Um, and, you know, so I've heard that side of the story as well. But this week, uh, I was on a chat group on a local GI Joe cr chat group, and I had heard a frightening story. Uh, so what had happened is, uh, this guy had a, a really decent GI Joe collection. Uh, from what I understand, his father had bought a lot of the GI Joe stuff for him and they had amassed this huge collection and it was like a thing. And one day him and a friend, uh, they were in the dad's study or something uh, because it was the only place that had a VCR and they were watching GI Joe cartoons. Um, and, that, and apparently that really pissed the dad off. Um, and yeah, the GI Joe collection apparently went into the ether as a result of this uh so there was that <laughs> and then hang on hang on, uh, hang on the cartoon pissed off the dad so the dad got rid of the toys no they were watching oh. stuff in the dad's study without having asked for permission and it uh pissed him off so as a lesson he went and destroyed all of their toys or all, all of destroyed you know, yeah <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> wow you know sometimes yeah. like just like those wild dreams where you do something absolutely unspeakable, I suppose it just makes makes you. It reminds you that you are in fact not an insane person. I've sometimes thought, mm, what would be, what would, what would it look like? What would it feel like to back the car up over the defiant, <laughs> or the flag, or something? Psycho. Like, drag that shit underneath the car for a few uh, blocks, like oh man frightening but this guy actually went and did it he destroyed his kids toys yeah Hardcore. and then you spent and then all that money buying all those things and then you you oh yeah exactly right because this is like you know i mean firstly south africa um and i don't know what it's like in the rest <laughs> of the world anything well dude i find that the parenting practices in south africa were very harsh when we were growing up like, this is not the first story. This is the, <laughs> now I'm going to tell you the other one. Relative to all the parenting practices you've experienced elsewhere, Paul. I mean, come on, man. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, that's why I said I don't know what it's like anywhere else. I just know that, like, mm. some of the stuff here is pretty crazy. Like, uh, this other story I heard is apparently somebody's grandmother, uh, she was very big in on the church. And in South Africa, sometimes people get a bit crazy with that with that side of it but hey to each his own no judgment whatever except for calling those people crazy which my bad but anyway uh she had found out that he had he-man toys or something and they went i think it was to the rand show or something and she literally took all of the he-man toys and whatever and put them in a box and set that on fire outside the house <laughs> because they were quote unquote satanic I mean, what? Uh, you know, the Havoc staff and the Skeletor's, Skeletor's face. face. Yeah, he's And yeah. Colossal Grayskull. There's a lot of, yeah, a lot of kind of gothic imagery. Um, I, right, yeah, but it's just... Well, it's, that's delightfully country bumpkin of that particular person. It's a super Gosh. overreaction, in my opinion. And, I mean, I rem I've got this buddy of mine that he did something naughty as a kid. I don't know. I think he broke a window or something. You know, stupid kid shit that you do when you're a kid. You know, if you haven't broken a window, cool. You know, it's not like you haven't lived. But, you know, all of us have broken a window or something at some point in, in our lives. And it happened to be our parents' window. You know, if you're lucky. Otherwise, if you're really unlucky, you broke a friend of yours' parents' window. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> <clears throat> so this, I, I, I think he, I, I think this was the story, and I, because he, you know, his mom had actually told me the story when I was in high school. So he had done something, and it pissed the dad off so much that his dad went and grabbed his uh, sword of omens. Remember that really cool sword of omens that you could get? I had that. I had rad, that too. Right? Yeah. Such a cool toy. Anyway, he went there and he looked at James and he snapped that sword in half in front of James's face, and I was like, "What the hell? That is so." I think it's just really barbaric, actually. That's uh, and also it just sets a very nasty precedent. Like it, I don't know. I just feel like it teaches you shit stuff, like to take into adulthood. But anyway, I that happened. my sort of omens by like basically waging war on trees. <laughs> <laughs> Plastic like versus any good wood. kid should. Which yeah. which one will win? Mm. Mm. But yeah, it's a great. And toy. you still have the tree, but you don't have the sword. So now we know. 
Lion over is full of crap. That tree's dead. Even <laughs> 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 won in the end. The curse, the curse of the Sword of Omens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it turns out. Sorry, Lion Let me take that back. Turns out the Sword of Omens ain't, ain't a lot of shit. Anyway, so it was that willow tree, Rob. You'll remember it. It had a. We once had a weeping willow in the back of the garden. Yes, and, yes, um, yes. I used to I practice my that. my sword play on it <laughs> <laughs> until right. that thing split in two, and eventually just yeah, just, it was no split more. The whole tree in two from all <laughs> you <those> eventually got <laughs> those it. Those years Steve, of like, hitting it. Yeah, it should a thousand cuts, eh? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know well, what 10, I mean, guys. Points. It's it's yeah. late down under. Um, I split the sword in half because, of course, you know, it's two plastic halves that were yeah. glued. Yeah. So it was a, like like when your the soles of your shoes split and you have talking shoes. Well, my sword was sort of flap 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 like a two halves <laughs> clapping clapping. It together. became like a trisectional staff or like a whip sword. <laughs> cool. Or like one of those I don't know those clappers. You know, those things, there's just like a noisemaker. Yes. Yeah, that's what my sword was like after that. Anyway. Oh, yeah, when that happens to your swords, guys, you know. Paul, we're <laughs> blowing away, of course, here, man. Open. We are talking anyway, about anyway. losing your collection, collection. to... Something, oh, to some not? force beyond your control. Or maybe it was a force uh, under your control. My question mm. is, gentlemen, have you guys ever lost a part of your collection or your collection... Um, either willingly or unwillingly, um, or due to some kind of force majeure or whatever's like, has that ever happened to any of you? I fully anticipate being the guy who everyone's like, well, fuck you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> because actually, no, at all. Um, through a combination of not ever getting rid of anything myself, you know, because I, I guess I practiced a strict doctrine that, um, you know, particularly with females, like the collection was around before you came to my life. So mm -hmm. if it comes down to a choice between you and my toys, <laughs> best believe Bye, the honey. plastic is going to stay. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so if girls weren't going to get me to drop the habit, um, nothing would. Okay, and, cool. and it's a combination of that and the fact that my folks indulged me. They mm. were perhaps too hippie for their own good. They were like, if Steven wants to play with toys well into his mid-twenties, that's lovely. We're going to encourage, well, I wouldn't say necessarily We're encourage, but it. certainly <laughs> not discourage it. As long as like after a late night gaming session with the boys, the house is returned to its normal you know, state in the mm. morning, that's all good. That's so cool. yeah, I, I I kind of rest my case as just saying yeah, those two things, combination of great parents and also my stubbornness that like, eh, plenty of fish in the sea. If she doesn't like my collecting habits, well, I'll find me another one. <laughs> mm. No power to you on that one. I feel the same. And Rob, I courted Kim, my wife, mm -hmm. with a gigantic at at staring down at her. So, <laughs> that set the tone <laughs> oh and i will say one more thing 40 year old virgin i'm on board with that film until he, i think it's his friends or it's the girl who convince him to like sell off all his toys yeah and my annoyance with that film starts at that point because he actually does it yeah and i just think to myself dude what a waste Mm. find someone who loves you for who you actually are man mm -hmm. the message of this film sucks and yep. i don't know if they actually like correct that message toward the end because i cannot watch it they don't i i rage quit that fucking movie <laughs> they don't that, that film's ultimate message is that uh having a healthy married relationship or something like that is ultimately a greater goal than pursuing your passions uh, at least or, that's what or, I or took from put, it. Put a little bit more cynically, chasing Poontang uh, is better than, you know, d deny yourself, deny who you are in order to get chicks. Like, yeah. Because that is a worthy pursuit. That's that's not lying to yourself at all. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I'm getting worked up. Can you tell? 
No, I can tell, but that's great. That's <laughs> awesome, man. And Rob, have you have you ever had a moment like in your life where you were like, it's just got to all go? Like, I can't have these He-Man toys staring at me. I'm going to sell them all off. I have to become an adult or... You know, you went out for steak one day and you came back and your mom had decided, well, you know what, your cousins needed your He-Man toys or G.I. Joe's more than you did. Uh, I mean, I'm making this up, obviously, but I mean, did anything like that happen to you? For, fortunately, no. Um, I, I, I've, I've been as lucky as Stephen. I mean, and also, I suppose, lucky because of Stephen, because most of my collection has always been with him. So if anything happened to his stuff, it would happen to my stuff, too. <laughs> um Otherwise, I mean, I've, I've always had my childhood stuff um, in boxes and things, and so I've always had it with me. Mm. And my mom's been pretty good at, like, not feeling like she needs to throw away my stuff. Like, she'll, you know, she, we're, we're, even when we moved into a much smaller place, we somehow made it work that I, I kept all of my stuff. We threw away stuff we didn't need, um, but we made it work. She was just, she was more than happy to have me have a tiny little room, uh, you know, two, whatever, three meters by four four meters filled with boxes was like if you want to live like that you can live like that <laughs> that's your choice but one day you're gonna have to throw this shit away if you want to but you do it yourself um yeah so luckily i'm, I'm another person who has thankfully doesn't have um you know horror stories like in that in that regard oh that's cool i'm People i'm very, very happy to hear that no, i will that's... never have to grow up <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Now it's my turn. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, I also ain't bad. Paul, <laughs> right. I have a suspicion though that if you did ever lose any of your collection to well life and stuff, you've more than made up for it now, my friend. Thank you, and that's actually part of the psychology of this as well for me, and why I, I feel like I needed to do this this um, episode um, because it's a bit He's of a deeply scarred. Uh, it's a bit of catharsis and yeah, it is scarring. Like I, I'm not going to lie. It is. And I'm sure when we get into some of our submissions, uh, we're going to see some of that as well. So, uh, let me start with, I'm very fortunate in that my parents are also very supportive of my toy habits. Uh, you know, my dad would often, you know, like come up to me and go, why don't I sell this stuff? You know, if it's so valuable, blah, blah, blah. But he would say that, but he would always be very respectful of my comics cards toys, whatever I had uh, amassed in my childhood or in my life, actually. Um, and was always like, oh, if we needed to move something, he would go, hey, listen, um, I know that you're storing some comics and things here. Would you mind moving them before we do any stuff, you know, do anything? So that's like been really cool about my dad and my folks and whatever. And they have indulged it. I mean, you know, they bankrolled it for a good portion of my life. And, you know, I was I was hungry for toys when I was a kid, like we all were. And um, you know, it's, thankfully, I had a cool collection of G.I. Joes and Ninja Turtles and whatnot. Um, what had happened to, to my collection? It, it wasn't some one foul swoop kind of thing. What had kind of slowly happened is I'm an only child. And so, like, it's cool when you're an only child. It's nice having your friends around and, and whatever. Because, you know, you don't really have that in the form of siblings and, and that kind of thing. So, you... You know, people come over and then sometimes, you know, you have your, when you, especially when you're young, you know, you have your toys with you at school. And so you make friends and whatever, and they come out to your place. So that was the first offender. Um, I used to have friends who would like sort of sneakishly either steal a toy from me. Um, and listen, it's an easy thing to do because, you know, you've got your new toy and you're focusing a lot on that and whatever. And then, you know, one day you start looking for like backblast or whatever, and then you can't find him. Um, and then you realize he's gone or insert annihilator here or whatever. And then you can't figure out what had actually happened to it because, you know, you, you know, I was pretty organized as a kid. I used to keep all my toys together also in a box, you know, whether it was a giant toy box or the box with my Lego or, or in a drawer, like I always kept an eye on that stuff. So I had like friends that like used to steal toys from me, which was like really annoying. And, um, and then, and I'm going to bring up something that's quite South African and, I want you guys to understand, uh, you guys here, in the, uh, Steve, Rob, you guys understand this very well, but I just need people outside of South Africa to understand this. So we, uh, and I, sorry, Steve, I can feel your eyes roll now. <laughs> so in South Africa, we have domestic workers, okay? Um, because we have a very high poverty rate in South Africa and there's a whole bunch of politics and all kinds of really shitty stuff that has happened that led to this. But anyway, uh, so we have domestic workers and domestic workers are awesome 
when you're when you're young because you know our parents both had jobs and a domestic worker would also end up being a childminder and that was awesome and you know a lot of us have built very good relationships with you know our domestic workers in fact i don't even like to use the word domestic worker i like to refer to dora irene these are people in my life who who were part of you know raising me and they also really made sure our house looked amazing and this was a you know this considered low income thing so when i say this don't think that like oh my word i'm coming from this point of like oh we live on the mansion on the hill and we have people working for us as slaves and whatever it's, it's nothing like that it's it's more a case of it's a job it's a type of uh, it's a type of a job and it's a provided job okay so cool and everybody or not everybody but like when i was growing up pretty much everybody had a domestic worker and it's still today it's actually something that's being unionized and whatever anyway so sometimes you know they come by hard times or family their family would come and visit our homes and things like that and what actually happened a lot was when i was at school or away at friends or doing some or doing sport at school the few times that i did sport at school i would come home and then find little things were missing and uh and it got quite bad and my parents actually never believed me and they never believed that my toys were being stolen until my mom started realizing that jewelry had been stolen so this person in particular she wasn't a good person i mean well not a good person she was just she, obviously she felt pressured this was something that she felt she needed to do and so a lot of my collection got lost through that and then we get into my gaming collection so when i was small i had quite a good mega drive and nes collection of games which i loved and this is self inflicted unfortunately my buddy david um we had this mutual friend called quinton uh and mutual friend is actually a very nice way of putting it um but he ha had opened up a rental store a pizza and rental store so he asked us if we, he wouldn't mind uh paying us for our games and then we would get like profit off him renting out our games or we we would get profit off him renting out our games anyway so that was cool his business only lasted like 2 or 3 months he only told us 5 months later that it had closed down and that we can come and see to come and collect our games then when we try to make a plan to go and get our games and we're not talking about like 10 or 15 cartridges here we're talking like david and my mega drive and nes collection which was something close to the 80s in terms of cartridges um hmm. i lost my entire mega drive and nes collection because of some stupid stupid decision i made uh that David and I both made together thinking that okay cool we're going to try and you know maybe make some money and and be smart about renting out games and all that kind of stuff so that was one thing that I lost in a big way and then to cap it all off and I'm sorry this is not meant to be like Yanni Yamur pants or you know Johnny Sorry pants uh for those of you who don't understand Afrikaans <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it just doesn't translate well Yanni Yamur I know right Yanni I know it doesn't have the same Yeah. What so the last thing Jammerbrücke of Janni Jammerbrück, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Rechte Rechte in yeah. my bro. Yeah, but I I like you know me. I like to flip it up and mix it around a bit funny galore it a bit. Anyway, <laughs> so the last thing was also self-inflicted, but this is actually I don't know if this is a positive or a negative. But David and I got bit by the by this um customizing bug. <laughs> Bots like uh-huh. <laughs> um and well we started taking our gi joes apart and putting them together um until eventually our gi joe collection was not representative of of its original state at all it had been refashioned retooled repainted parts were melted on hands weapons were cut up and turned into new weapons guns were cut up in half and reglued basically the gi joe collection that David and I had amassed was a shadow of its former self but now in new colors with silver and new weapons and horns on it from other toy lines and things which is really really cool until you fast forward like you know 10 years later you know and you're like damn it I wish I never did that um I really don't know where I stand with that part of my life um because one side of it it taught me a lot with in terms of model kit building model painting customizing fixing joes all of that kit bashing goodness all of that good stuff you know it taught me a lot of that great stuff but on the other hand i really lost a great collection of toys so i'm like 50 50 on that and it's not that tragic but that is how my gi joe collection essentially died and all the other things i mentioned before 
that is how my Ninja Turtles got whittled down to me only having Rocksteady left. My He-Man toys being whittled down to me only having Blast Attack and Skeletor left. And me not having any, res- uh, any semblance of a Brave Star, Bionic 6, G.I. Joe in some regards, Marvel superheroes, X-Men, whatever's. <laughs> so, Jeez, Paul. Yeah, dude. It's crazy, hey? The cull was comprehensive. It was. And I think I mean I was gonna I, stop short of asking you like what happened to your bug, like your cobra bug. Did you wind up customizing that into oblivion? But it sounds like yeah. everything, everything yeah. got the scalpel. Yeah, pretty much. I mean the, the bug got battle damage and all kinds of stuff. The warthog suffered <laughs> significant damage. It was never it was never like uh, malicious. We never just did it for breaking it. It was always like to enhance the story because at some I've point in your customs, your childhood customs, and they are good and they are very creative. It speaks to like the level of your artistic ability, even at that age. Thank um, you, man. And, you know, flash forward to the other side of the fence. I think Rob and I attempted like burning things and <laughs> like adding, <clears throat> like, we took like soldering um, irons and like melted metal into the sort of the eye sockets to give them these, <laughs> wow. like metal bulbous eyes but these were always being done to like cheapy crap like bending yeah. figures Random and stuff like that like, figures. there's no ways we we're going to make um significant and lasting changes to like toys that we valued so i think the the, the worst we ever did was i don't know to take firecrackers and stuff it into the waistband of a core figure. Core. Cool. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's Joe's, fine. Yeah. Joe's yeah, really roots, a core. They were gold. In fact, Rob, I would hazard a guess that you still have mint in box, okay, played with, like they've been taken out of their boxes but then returned back into their boxes, Dino Rider toys? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think the one might be missing one thing, if I remember correctly. But I mean, in general, yeah, all of my Dino Riders are in their boxes. I mean, I don't have a lot. I think I have like two or three of them. But, but you um, always return them into their boxes. So, like, into the, the boxes. boxes are they in always good went shape. straight back to the boxes. <laughs> the box inserts are in good shape. And the toys themselves, I mean, I imagine all the rubber has like cracked into a thousand pieces but yeah for sure but like they they ended up back in there i mean it just depends yeah i mean those are always back in their boxes but i mean like the general i still have a box of you know general loose toys like the he-man figures the uh, thundercats figures and all that and the x-men they're all Mm. those all just in a one giant box you know they just all sit together mashing against each other Scratching each other to oblivion, it's we the can't mash. recognize them anymore. This, this eternal orgy <laughs> the monster <of> plastic. <laughs> <laughs> there is a positive. Guys, let's not rub salt in the, the wound too much. Yeah. Uh, let's 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 let Paul keep um, lamenting. So, but so, I think um, the good stuff came out of what what you did to your collection. I mean, it's, it sounds like right? a lot of what you lost was kind of self inflicted, but at the same time, you gained a lot through losing a lot, and right? now you've kind of gotten so much of it back. Um, I think I, your story, at least, is a winning story. It it is all. it is because uh, and it's also like it depends on how you uh, what you do with that as well. Like at one point in my teenage years, I really lamented it a lot. I mean, I mean, we're we're teenagers. We're full of like angst and and all kinds of no, stupid we're not. cuck. <laughs> uh, well, we're old men now, Paul. No, but yeah. I'm just saying when when we were teenagers, I carried a lot of that baggage with me and. Uh, a lot of what like set me free from that was uh, getting some form of in, uh, financial independence a little bit. You know, like when I say financial in- independence, I mean like, you know, actually working like a steady weekend job or w- working steady holiday jobs and, and making cash and being able to buy um, video games and toys and whatever's for myself. Um, and, and then learning that there was like a vintage scene where you could pick up older toys and, and that kind of thing. But the the real positives that came from here was Firstly, you know, like uh, Hans has said in the in the comments, he goes, he would has it that they aren't friends anymore. Um, and that's true. And that's one thing it taught me. It taught me who to let into my life. You know, like what kind of, you know, what are people in my life for? And it, it taught me how to do that. It taught me to be more careful with, with bringing people into my life. Um, as my mom would say, um, and I don't remember this, but my mom used to get these uh, big boxes of chocolates because we, she used to be friends with the Nestle guys because they were one of her clients 
uh, when she was a rep for a trucking company. And so we used to get these big boxes full of um, chocolate slabs. And my mom said what I used to do is, is when they would sleep on Sundays, I would apparently take like two or three of these boxes, stand in the street and hand them out to random people that would walk, walk past the house. That was what I was doing as like a four-year-old or five-year-old kid. Um, did you, and did you get any strange glances like, what's wrong with this chocolate? Dude, no, I don't know. I don't even remember doing it. I mean, I know this because my mom told me I did it, you know, and she said like, it wasn't like one occasion. So that just tells me hey, that my personality man, the late 80s was a different time. Hey, eh? it was, you just I mean, trust. you trust people. Well, now, I mean, now, if you see a kid, you know, like now in, in this world, if you were a kid handing out chocolate, well, then you're just a kid with a you know, with bonus chocolate that comes with you, you know, Ooh, that's a dark thought. Anyway, um, but I think that speaks a lot of like the kind of personality I had as a child. And I think I just let a lot of people in and I think I was a, a part of me wasn't I wasn't protecting myself properly. So yeah, you know, you learn you learned that thing. I learned the I learned the value of like maybe looking after my stuff better. I learned the value of my stuff. Um, I it, it taught me, I, I learned some very important business things about like selling stuff. I mean, that's a horrible mistake to make, but I learned from that mistake. You know, th so those are like some, some fundamental things that came from that. And then the greatest gift that that has given me is that I've had the opportunity to build my collection again. You know, like Steve, you've had your childhood shockwave and Rob, you've had your childhood scoop. And, you know, I forever carried childhood favorites inside me that I don't have anymore, which I have now been able to acquire either through my own means by going onto eBay or, you know, seeing them at Joe, uh, Joe Con or, you know, through the, uh, through the, the kindness of our supporters, through the kindness of friends, I've been able to amass that collection. And in a weird way, that's been better. That's been a hundred times better. It's, it's got, I've got much better memories associated with those toys, with those things that I have in my life. I have a purpose for that collection. And that's, that's been a really, really positive thing for me. So for those of you listening, thank you very much for sitting through this. I really appreciate that. And I'm sure that some of it was better. relatable. Do I do feel before? better. I do feel better. And, mm. and, and it's a cool thing. And it's something that I, I'm hoping it, it's a value I'd like to teach my kids as well going forward. And, and, uh, it's just something I'd like to extend. You know, I know that there are a lot of collectors out there who are very proud of their collections now. And maybe in spite of the fact that, you know, they have had them, uh, lost them in some points, which brings me to, and unless you guys have anything else to say, I would like to hear what our, what some of our, uh, you know, supporters and fans and, uh, members on Facebook and whatever have had to say about their collections, if they've had anything like that. How do you guys feel? Should we get into that? Oh, yes. Oh, Let's yes. dig Paul deep. The, Paul but put I'm the gonna word put... out onto the socials, and <laughs> our very first response came actually from the Talking Joe podcast, from Mark, who says, Hey, Paul and co., just responding to your request, I was big into Action Force as a kid. It was my number one interest from 1984, and I continued on collecting the toys well beyond that time most kids had stopped. Between me and my brother Pete, we had a massive collection. The majority of the UK released figures and vehicles. Whoa, nice. I left home for uni and left my collection behind at the family home with my brother. I grew up and moved on from the toys. A little while later, with the Devil's Due books and the toy line starting up again, our interest started up again. I picked up some of the new toys and Peter filled in the gaps in the collection via eBay including some of the international figures we never had in the UK at much more reasonable prices than today. But time moved on. We both burned out on collecting. I became a father and put childish things to one side. Peter moved out to a place of his own and with bills to pay and without the room for a massive toy collection, he sold the collection in its entirety. <sighs> 10 or so Enough. years on, I regret that I didn't hold on to some parts of that collection. I don't miss not having the later releases that I don't have that childhood nostalgia for, and I don't have too big a room for a big vehicle collection, but I have found myself rebuying select favorite pieces from those magical early releases that hit the nostalgia factor hard. I don't need to go back and get everything. I am happy with my modest but growing couple of shoeboxes worth of vintage figures. 
I had even sold all my original G.I. Joe comics, but for a different reason. After buying the 15 volumes of trade reprints, I thought that it was unnecessary to have the comics too. I've gone back and repurchased them as the trades just aren't the same as the original Bond with paper stock. Modern and the coloring. coloring on, yeah, modern coloring on glossy white paper Ugh. and lack of adverts and letters pages. All the best, Mark, Talking Joe Podcast. Yeah. Where do you guys stand on um, trade paperbacks versus the original floppies? I'm very happy to have uh, the 15 trades that I have for G.I. Joe. Um, I wish I had a, a comic collection to back it up. Uh, I like the trades to read. I like the comics to collect. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, I'd probably make that distinction as well. Um, yeah. Comics for collecting and then trades are a good thing to be able to read through them. So you don't have to like open every single comic book out of their you know, plastic bag and then put it back in afterwards and be very careful with the Cause depending on the comic book it's a quick read i mean comic books don't take a long time to read depending on the comic book but yeah i think i'd, I'd probably be the same like that you also, collect I'm, comic books you don't collect graphic novels also i'm a i'm the kind of guy who likes to lie down on a couch like lays into a couch or in a bed and read read a story you know and you can't do that with comic books at least i can't because of working in comic stores for such a long time <laughs> in my life that I have to have them on a flat table with something underneath them that's protecting them. And then I'm very, and my hands are like super, super, super clean. I can't eat or drink or anything. And I'm very carefully handling the edges of the pages to turn the page. Um, that's me with comic books. So yeah, <laughs> enjoying comic books properly. Um, and then also collecting them creates a barrier to entry or barrier of enjoyment for me. I can't just read them like, you know, sitting on the loo or whatever, you know, at least with a trade well, you can. This is a topic for another podcast perhaps, <laughs> but uh, the pendulum swung the opposite way for me. And I probably have Talking Joe to thank for this because you get a nice dichotomy of opinions. You know, some people are reading electronic versions. Some people are reading trades. Some people are reading the individual floppies. And the argument for the floppies is that all of those invested um, sensations are part of the reading process. So the advertisements, the letters mm -hmm. pages, Stan's soapbox, the actual <clears throat> newsprint paper or the, the paper stock that is used for those classic uh, comic books and the way they smell. Ah, man, you just can't, you can't bottle that. Uh, so uh, unfortunately my, my, um, my classic one to f one to one fifty five issue run, um, is pretty tatty. So I don't feel too precious about it. It is by and large the comic book collection that I poured over as a youth. So there are smudges, there's oil stains, there are the edges, some of the covers are completely torn free. Um, so I don't bag them and board them. They are quick to hand anytime you want to grab them. When you are not in Australia, nine time zones away from them, I might add. <laughs> so right now I'm having to do with um, reading on a, on a laptop screen, which is balls. I hate it, but necessary evil, right? And I'm grateful True. that I have access to digital copies of the collection. So thanks to the, the, the hands that have allowed that to, to, to happen. I am in your debt. I'm actually looking forward to a comic book conversation on this podcast one day, like a like an mm. in-depth one. Uh, Swinging it back to toys, though, uh, Chief from Talking Joe and now Art of Timers and Armor Geekdom and pff, on with the Rewind. This man just keeps adding podcasts and channels. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He confessed to me that he stopped short of rebuying his childhood Joes because they weren't his childhood Joes. This would just be some other kid's toy. Like, he would love to have back the originals that, that were in his collection. But there's no ways you could ever track those down. So, uh, he's not going to. Not going to get other versions. Or other copies, I should say. And I can, I can buy that. Like, Paul, this, this kind of runs counter to, to your philosophy that rebuying is every bit as enjoyable, if not more enjoyable. Like for Chief, if it doesn't have that paint smudge or that that nick 
that his original had like you know if it's not the original one it's not the original one like this is someone else's toy not mine i had to get over that (laughs) (laughs) um i i'm 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 exceptionally sentimental when it comes to stuff like that and so i had to actually get over that um in a big way uh yeah yeah, yeah, otherwise you just wouldn't collect at all you'd be like well shit my childhood exactly, stuff right? isn't coming back from the dead. <laughs> but you know what it comes. But you know what is a close second best to that, though, in my experience that I've found, and I'm sure you guys can relate to this. In South Africa, the GI Joe fandom is so small, um, and and you know, in relation to the rest of the world, I'd say that if you do happen to buy a GI Joe character that you really love or that you're looking for in your collection from a local seller somebody that's had it from his childhood collection or you just find it at an antique store or like a, a a boot sale or something that very seldom happens in south africa but when you do find it that is kind of cool because you're still buying a, a gi joe that had originally lived in south africa before you got it so it it feels kind of closer and and uh to add a bit of steroids to that i and i've mentioned this before but i had the the opportunity well not the opportunity uh i had the the good grace (laughs) um of a beautiful uh 20 odd figure collection come find its way to me that had my holy grail in it and that was bought from a local seller and that was a beautiful story because he had a he had amassed uh a huge collection of gi joe robotech thundercats he-man comic books superhero stuff uh, wwe stuff and he had actually met the love of his life and he was making she didn't tell him to get rid of it it's not nothing like that what had happened is he wanted to immigrate to dubai uh, to be with her and he basically sold everything he had to build up the funds so that he could start a new life with the woman that he loved because he had actually met somebody that's like really special to him and so he sold that collection so now i've got a part of that collection and i've got that story with that collection to tell and that collect that's that that collection came with file cards and with card backs and they still have checkers pricing on them pick and pay pricing on them and and that that is a good second best to not being able to get your childhood collection is to get somebody else's childhood collection (laughs) Mm. um that was sold for the uh for a good reason because he's doing well now you know sean if you're listening to this uh dude i'm glad to see that you're kicking all kinds of butt he has managed to reacquire his own new collection which suits his new life much better so that's always that's a good second best but anyway i'm taking away from from the excitement of hearing from our listeners bad paul (laughs) (laughs) well i'm sure they're enjoying hearing from you um okay well here's a story from chris knapp aka ck I lost my entire, t- entire collection. I had pieces from 90s through 2012. Every single item from Riser Cobra to Pseudo Cobra to re- Retaliation. I was entering them into our local county fair, even ended up on TV with them. I had custom works, legends from the 80s, I was building dyers and sharing all that I had. Then disaster struck. I lost my very high paying job, then my now ex-wife was stealing my credit cards and running them up while I slept. I was working nights. All of a sudden I had to pay credit debts, a car payment and loans on a minimum wage job. So I called my local toy dealer and sold off my collection. I was a broken man at that point. Soon I left left my ex-wife, found another that loves me and all of my quirks. Soon I bought some pieces back. Then I got into Dio's as a release. Soon we left that state and I came home to Florida with the baby on the way. Now I G.I. Joe all the time as you have seen bringing back to life old Joes, creating new ones and new life. They will not be sold again. They are for my son when he gets older. Yo, Joe. Yeah, and that is why the toys stay. (laughs) The Joes stay, the hoe goes. (laughs) Sorry, that's terribly (laughs) sexist. (laughs) It's just funny. But like, that is why you stick with what Steve said as well. If she, uh, the toys are there before her and they'll be there after her or even better, with her <laughs> you know well it, it so. sounds like he's found someone who appreciates him and appreciates you know that he loves loves the toys and he's he's managed to turn his entire life around and that's absolutely incredible chris um i'm also glad to hear that your toy collection i know you were broken but i'm glad to hear that it managed to, to help you solve some problems as well 
I'm, I can't even imagine actually how much of I a don't want choice to. that was. But um, mm. but, yeah, but but your toy collection was was hopefully it helped you turn your entire life around. I mean, you had to get rid of it, but somehow losing it helped you gain so much more and come mm. to a much better place in your life. And that's incredible. Um, I think I'm going to look CK story, up and ask him better. about his uh, his TV appearance, courtesy of his toy collection. That's mm. got me interested. Mm. Um, but also. Uh, I don't want to alienate folks out there whose partners or spouses or loved ones are kind of ambivalent about the toy collecting. Like, if they're not entirely in love with it, that's fine too. You know, mm. just as long as they don't stifle your joys. Like, if they can appreciate, if, if they take joy in your joy, is th that's what I mean. Like, yeah, well, I mean, everyone has, has, has different interests. Get behind it and cosplay uh lady j for you at the <laughs> next joke convention like you know but everyone but can have their own interests in the whether way. it's toys or you know your your thing is um i don't know going to the gym you, you you're a big gym nut and your your wife or your partner is not that interested in gym gains. i mean gains you show know me i think a partner, i think it could be anything. a partner who doesn't want their spouse or partner or lover to be hitting the gym Okay, well, that's that's a bad example, but I don't know. I'm just saying, like, it's people can have different interests, um, and you don't have to. And whether it's toys or something else, I don't think people should discourage someone from doing something if it doesn't harm anyone. Unless you know? it's cocaine, discourage cocaine. Please, that's what I'm saying. Unless it doesn't harm anyone, <laughs> I hear you right. toys doesn't hurt anyone. Man. Flow is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this like is one of the best years of my life. I don't remember them, <laughs> but it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, like it, you just um, you gave me such a funny picture in my head now, Steve. When you when you mentioned like which which partner doesn't want or who doesn't want their partner to hit the gym and whatever, and I'm thinking about all those people that live with like a serious gym nut who is like you know sitting there and like eating, and then they've got Loosen like it. protein powder on top of their like carbo loading it's like this is number four for today and they're just like pump it up pump it up Arr! you know because i know that those that, that kind of personality can also be quite difficult to be with but hey once again if your freak flag flies with them awesome if it doesn't yeah it can be it can be tricky but yeah i hear what you're saying dude like don't don't let's, yeah let's not be those guys that are like hey if you if your significant other isn't into toys like you know ditch them that's <laughs> but like yeah but if they're like secret, um, dude, I, sorry, I've got to share this as well. This just came back. To, I bought a Batman. I actually kind of feel bad about this. Uh, a lady comes into the comic, uh, into Anime Works the one time. Uh, she, yeah. she comes upstairs. She's like, hi guys, sorry, I did phone you earlier. Um, just about some toys and stuff that I wanted to sell. So we're like, oh, okay, cool. She's like, would one or two of you mind please coming through and just helping me carry the boxes from the car? So I'm thinking, okay, cool. So Trev and I, we go outside and we go and get the boxes from the car and we walked into to the shop and she's like, okay. Um, and then, you know, Tex comes back in and he's like, oh yeah. And, and he's like, okay, so guys, all I need you to do is just take them all out of, the, out of the boxes, evaluate them, give me an evaluation and whatever's and we'll take care of it. And she's like, how long is it gonna take? And Tex is like, give us like an hour, an hour to two hours. And she's like, no, no problem. She'll, she'll go out she'll come back later on in, in the day. Anyway, so we evaluate the, the toys and whatever's. And it's like basic stuff, you know, it's like, when I say basic stuff, that's not fair. But it's like a huge collection of McFarlane and it's a, it's a decent collection of like some Batman stuff and some DC stuff here and there. And uh, anyway, so we, this whole collection is now collated and it's been evaluated and whatever's. And then, you know, um, she, she, you know, takes her goes, okay, this is what I can offer you. And he's like, would you like credit or would you like cash? Normally we don't do cash, but it was a special circumstance. Anyway, so she's like, no, I'd like to do cash. And she's like, is there a way you can, you guys can give me a receipt? And we're like, yeah, of course, you know, to, to prove that she sold it. So anyway, we're going through the whole, uh, we're going through it. And I'm just like, wow, this is a really great, because it's me, right? Of course I would ask. Um, I'm like, this is a great collection. Are you guys immigrating or something? She's like, no, this is my, my, my ex-husband's collection. So I'm like, oh shit. She's like, yeah, fuck him. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Basically, I don't know what the story was, but this was her revenge play. She had literally stolen his collection and sold it to us. Um, <laughs> and it was like, like he was playing with uh, uh, a little bit of other dolls on the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but she was like, 
angry. So, you know, the one side of me is like, you know, power to you, you know, but she was like, yeah, she was like, this is the one way I just know I'm going to kick him in the balls. And I've got to say, ever since that, I always have the conversation with any new person that comes into my life. I'm like, you can be angry with me and you can hate me, but please don't send me into the, like psychology by like, you know, selling off my toy collection. <laughs> if you ever get like, so unbelievably angry with me, you know, we can that figure this me out. Of this horrifying uh case that we heard about back in my varsity days of a vintage wine collector who has these exceptionally good vintage uh wines um sort of an investment shall we say that is quite mature but a messy divorce uh had his ex basically taking all of the bottles and soaking them in hot water so that the oh labels all the labels all came off ah. yeah. <sighs> so this this wine which you know like all the value essentially is in is in the print like knowing what year it is you can't identify them otherwise Without, so yeah yeah so i mean it's 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 not like she's destroyed the collection of wine you can still open them and drink them and enjoy them but like all the value in knowing where they come from and what year they were produced yeah anyways this is an interesting tangent we've gone on paul yeah sorry i i, I didn't i, I feel I, it just came to me now i was really not planning on telling that story i actually up until now i, I had forgotten about it and then just something just sparked it anyway Let's hear from Do we have Mike another on Facebook, man. Uh, Mike Horsley says, As a kid, I had everything He-Man except Eternia. Go, Mike. Every Transformer except Omega Supreme. And everything Joe through 88 except the Flag, Whale, and Pterodrome. In 89, I thought I was getting too old for toys and got hustled by a dude on my block that convinced me to trade all my toys for a fancy new cell phone. The giant briefcase one and a pager. <laughs> to this day, I consider it one of the stupidest life choices I've ever made. But we live and we learn. We do indeed learn. <laughs> I, I can see that though. I can see like, do you guys ever think to yourselves, like, this has got to be the ceiling of technology. Like, the shit we can do now is like, for example, Nintendo cartridges used to be like $50 a pop, right? Yeah. When they mm. were coming out, that was the price of them. That is <clears> an astronomical <throat> amount of money if you think about how simplistic those games are now. Like as ROMs, you can have mm. all of them for free. There is no necessarily... Okay, there's, there's value in the physical medium. Um, you know, if you have the actual cartridges, those things... There's also an analog valuable. value to it as well. Sure, but, yeah, but the, yeah, the yeah. software itself, worthless mm. almost. Um, and, and that's not to d devalue like the incredible of course, yeah. visionary work in, in designing and creating those games back in the day. But like in terms of their, their, their monetary value now, it's nothing. So the same token, like in 89, that cell phone must have seemed like the most value, like worth its weight in gold and then some. So I get that, but it, it like with 2021 hindsight, holy shit, that was a lot of amazing plastic to, to, to give for a piece of tech that is absolute trash now. Exactly. Oh, Mike, my heart. I'm so sorry. Yeah, buddy. dude, I feel you, man. Like, but like he said, you know, you live and you learn and you learn things like that, like the I, I, I don't believe technology is equitable to like game software or games consoles or anything. It's, it's like equitable to like my, my collection. Like I feel like in 10 years time, I'll be able to play that game that maybe I couldn't afford now through the forms of emulation or online purchasing or digital purchases or whatever. I'm not going to be able to download GI Joe. I mean, I will because... Uh, Are you about to embark on the collector war hey now what i mean by collector war is uh all these other collectibles be it music be it 
video games, uh, they are all ephemeral. I mean, you can you can have them. You can have an entire LP collection on a hard drive. Yeah. If that, have it have it in the cloud. Okay, people who have devoted their entire lives to comic book collections, for instance, like you can now have them all on your tablet, all of them, one tablet. Yeah. But, but my friends, there is no replacing of the physical plaything. There, there I mean, is no approximation of that. You can't digitize a three and three quarter inch GI Joe action figure. So this is my way of being ultra smug about my collecting choices. Yeah. <laughs> No, I've but <laughs> chosen the thing that will always be collectible. Yeah, but that time. I, well, I snubbed paper, video games, music, all in favor of the little <laughs> manichis. The manichis. I mean, dude, like for me, it's it's I, I can relate to that. I mean, I'm a bit of an outlier when it comes to games at the moment. Uh, in that, a lot of people I know are buying digital. Uh, they buy their games digitally, and I still prefer to buy boxed copies of games. Um, but I, I do if I I'd rather spend, you know, like a price for a, a collectible boxed copy video game. And when I say collectible, I don't mean like the hectic two, three hundred dollar versions. I mean, like, you know, when it, when the first release comes up with a steel tin or something, you know, I'd rather buy that than I have it. It's like a physical ownership because there's ritual and and I like ritual. I enjoy uh, like I've I've had uh, turntables for most of my life. I mean there hasn't been a moment in my life where, where there wasn't a record player near me. Okay. Okay. To be fair, my tea set is neatly packed away and it's stored, but the actual listening to records on a record player is a ritual. It's a very cool thing. I love the convenience of digital music, but I enjoy the ritual of being able to listen to my favorite album. And so I, hey, I get Paul, where you're coming Stan from. The man Lee said it best when, and this is courtesy <laughs> of Hans in the chats, comics are like boobs. They look great on a computer, but I'd rather hold one in my hand. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> dude. Yeah, because no, all, for sure. Yeah. The physical medium does have its appeal, but you cannot replicate a toy in digital. I mean... Yeah, but you also come experience. into a point where, where people don't... They don't care about the, the difference. I know, I know. Because, it's, you know, all no music... Really toys. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a generational thing. Because all music, all movies, all of that is completely available to you right now mm. without need for ownership. You just, you're buying access to be able to listen to every song ever recorded in history, to watch every and movie very little... ever made in history. People, there is no connection between what you're, what, you know, what you're paying for. Um, and the same with like the, the rise of digital um, items. Um, you know, where, where things, where you're buying, you're spending real money to buy items in games you know like in fortnite and whatever else these digital um uh, cosmetic items but then there's also the rise of actual digital items i think nfts um mm -hmm. that's where something. people pay money for something which is uniquely digital you cannot copy it or at least the copying of that digital item is exceptionally difficult um or almost and it impossible. devalues it yeah like the and copies it, are valued less yeah they're valued less but there's actually a, a thing that because of a chain of ownership and and whatever else, it proves that that item is uniquely itself, and people will pay money for things that that are ephemeral. So yes, while we have certainly chosen the collection, you know, a sphere which will forever be physical, it cannot it cannot become anything else. And over time, I mean, there'll be less and less of these as well, compared yeah. to well, it says you know, the, that you can store a toy on your computer and then print it out when you need or want it. I that is something. That 3D printing still a ways off. It is, it's and that's, getting there. It's getting there. That's why I think in like in, well, I'm saying ten years, but it might be in as little as five years' time. In as little as five years' time, I think basic the basic type of 3D printing that is achievable now that still requires a bit of legwork, you know, to get it right, will be very will be as easy, and I say easy with inverted commas as printing on a laser jet or whatever it is today, you know, like printing on paper today, you know, like how mm. you have a printer and you can just print out a PDF document because I don't know, you're a masochist, but whatever you do that. <laughs> um, I think in 10 years time, 
five to ten years time that's going to be 3d printing right and then your high quality 3d printers are still going to be re uh, like sort of reserved for your hobbyists but i firmly believe in this concept uh, that i've been thinking about now in the last three or four days speaking to my buddy about it is that i think we're going to start seeing like toy emulation and i think we're going to start seeing like all somebody's going to catalog it and i'm looking at you 3d joe's <laughs> um, somebody's going to catalog all the toys from the 80s up until now. People are going to do it. There's going to be groups. They're going to catalog these things as 3D models. And they're going to make them available digitally. And what's going to happen is one day you're just going to be able to download the, let's call it the ROM, okay, of your favorite toy and print it out. And I think that's something that's that's coming down the line. And I and I almost yeah, feel like sure, that's, but it's yeah. it still feels like it it will require an, a very high level of expertise though because you still have to put it together, <laughs> you still have to paint it up, you have to make it look like the way it did, or I suppose you can paint it up and make it look your own way. But we're still far away from literally just like in Star Trek replicating a toy. Like you go, right. yeah, and computer, printing, give me a like, shockwave GI Joe figure, nineteen eighty seven or whatever, nineteen eighty nine. whatever. The and then it, it doesn't it produces... create a clean a clean surface. Uh, yeah, printing, that depending on the printer. Now, yeah. really? now, okay. yeah. but eventually it will be able to do that. But the thing is, until it can literally make the figure, put it together for you, paint it, and obviously I suppose give you all the accessories, it's not going to be something that the mass, you know, people. No, in it's going to be a hobbyist thing. Unless yeah. it's able to specifically replicate that figure down to you know all the details without any effort on your part, um, I, I think we're still decades away from that. So, I mean, even even, even when it is able to reproduce that figure for you perfectly, <laughs> that's... There it is. It's still Paul not Paul says toy. five years, Rob says decades. I think yeah. decades for sure, You'll because be right. people aren't happy to... I mean, you, you, you want to get a finished product. I mean, that's just the way our society, you know, cons uh, capitalism and everything works is... Majority of people just want to go to shop. You buy the thing; it's yours now. You don't do anything. Um, any amount of effort makes it um, undesirable, I think. Unless you're like a hectic, but you know, a niche person who wants to be able to put it together yourself and do all this stuff. Well, in ten years' time, I'm sure they when you when you like watching decades. a movie, it's, it's gonna <laughs> decades. <laughs> it's gonna have that ad, you know the wow you wouldn't like down you wouldn't steal a car would you but then it'll change to <laughs> you wouldn't download a car would you or you wouldn't do this why are you downloading a car <laughs> because uh, but then yeah, i mean that completely that. changes the market because the i mean if, if it continues in that direction you will they will be encouraging you to instead of going to go to shops you literally just pay to be able to 3d print anything that you need which is why i also feel like the boutique store is going to sort of rise up again. But anyway, <laughs> before, <laughs> before we get too, da uh, too deep into that tunnel, uh, which is actually quite interesting, to be fair, That's I would like to read tunnel. some words by Darren Cobb. Mm. Darren says, After I moved out of home, my collection was gifted by my parents to my cousins from all sides of the family. Not mm. only did it spread my toys all over the state, but many of my cousins were quite young and pretty much destroyed slash lost them all. Broken heart. I have spent a lot of time refinding my old comics and books as it takes up, uh, uh, it takes up the least room. And with my RPG dice habit, I have to be very picky about what I get. So yeah, Darren, uh, that, is, that, that is the story I'm very familiar with. I used to have the entire He-Man collection, but then my mom gave it to my cousins. I know that story. I know that story well, and I'm sorry, dude. That's crazy. But hey, you know, uh, I don't personally, I can't, cannot relate to an RPG dice habit. But uh, <laughs> I, but but if you if you do scratch the surface of RPG dice, my word, it gets insane. There's some beautiful dice out there, actually. So yeah, Darren, cool man. <laughs> and I'm also glad that you've. Uh, actually managed to get some of that stuff back from what I can understand. Um, which brings us to another fantastic one. Joe Hunter 73 titled the ultimate sacrifice, or should I say Oof. the ultimate sacrifice? Cause this question like was. <laughs> hmm. As a kid in the late seventies, early eighties, star Wars was my first love. First the movies, then the Kenner toy line, then 1982 rolled around. And what was this? 
another three three quarter inch new toy line but with more articulation a new love was born for gi joe i never looked back well as a kid i didn't my love for star wars never died but the attention to detail that hasbro brought to the gi joe line was my desire as a child to continue to want more and more well, that is until I grew out of it and got into my teens and sports and girls were more of a factor to my life and I boxed my Joe collection. It wasn't until 1995, <laughs> 1995, in college I noticed someone with a Luke Skywalker that kind of resembled a He-Man build. <laughs> Power of the Force, anyone? <laughs> Curious, he told me that there is a whole new line of Star Wars figures. I went to my local retail store and found the entire line. At first I was not impressed, but eventually I caved and started collecting Star Wars. And from 95 to 2008, my collection grew until I asked myself, uh, why am I doing this? Each year they make the same figure, just updated paint and sculpting and a new scene. So I boxed them all up and kept them in storage until 2018. I started to see this GI Joe community grow and piqued my interest and really found my love for the Joe line again. But what to do with all my Star Wars collection? I found that my heart was not into it as it was with the vintage. So one day in 2020, I went to my local vintage toy store with all my containers full of Star Wars and asked for a store credit. A few days later, I got a call and the amount, which to my surprise was way more than I expected. So thanks to my hard work and dedication of the years of collecting the modern Star Wars toys, I was able to take that credit and in return, use it to get the USS flag. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Plus a G.I. Joe HQ and a few more things. So was the sacrifice worth it? For me, yes, it was. Dude, what a great story. What a fantastic story. That is awesome. Yeah. Wow. This is the a fact G.I. Joe that... podcast after all. So trading up Star Wars toys for G.I. Joe, always a win, uh, in, in my opinion. And hopefully yeah, the opinion sure. of 90% of the listeners out there. Thank you. Totally. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying that flag, Joe Hunter. Mm, and that G.I. Joe HQ. It's such a great playset. Wow. I still can't believe I took forever to get one. So glad I got one now. Thank you, Bart. Troy Smith. Bob, Bob Hansen sold off his collection to buy groceries. Heartbreaking oh. stuff. Oh. But a man's got to eat, right? But yeah. then he, uh, he had some health concerns and got back into collecting because he uh, had to spend some time on his on his back you know bedridden uh and flash forward to now bob is now making his brand of sun bob dio comics it's on youtube i will put a link in the description below check out sun bob troy smith uh says i don't regret too many things in my life and guys i hope you're sitting down um because I, I have read this one before I don't regret too many things in my life, but I do regret selling some of my G.I. Joes to a friend when I was supposed to be too old for them. I sold my whale, ta uh, tactical battle platform, and Cobra Terradrome along with many figures. But I want to answer the question in a different way. Six years ago, I found out I was going to have a son, and I decided to search the internet for G.I. Joes. Hey! <laughs> I found a guy on Craigslist who was selling his collection. We will call him Joe. Joe's listing said he was selling his entire collection, which was approximately eight boxes. I was thinking, your standard size moving boxes, but no, these were huge boxes. I had to take all the seats out of my minivan to fit in all the boxes. His collection included five Sky Strikers, two <sighs> Night Ravens, multiple Snow Cats, Snow Wolves, His Tanks, and Mobats. The Whale, two Mores, the TTBS, hmm. Tactical Battle Platform, hundreds of GI Joes. Tactical Battle Station? Oh, did I say BS? Oh. I meant BP. <laughs> Sorry. <Yes>, you're talking <laughs> BS. <laughs> hundreds of GI Joes, the GI Joe HQ, the MCC, and many more smaller and mid-sized vehicles. Oh yeah, there was a Defiant and Flag 2. It took me about a week to go through all the boxes. I... I'm, I'm shaking when I read this. Uh, again, I can't believe I'm still getting goosebumps. To you, Joe, I salute you. I want to thank you for selling your collection to me. It has brought me and my family a lot of joy over the past six years. I hope you don't regret selling your treasures. Please know they are in a better place than a storage unit. Some of those toys have found their way into G.I. Joe Berg videos and, on, uh, and now they are internet famous. Woo! 
That is so cool. Troy. Wow. <laughs> That's And amazing. I have a letter from Joe, which reads as follows. When I was a much younger man, I had a collection that included a flag, two mores, a whale, <laughs> a BTPS, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of figures, and I sold them for a song to some guy who needed a minivan to pick them up. I don't know. I'm, I'm doing a bit, clearly, but like... I wonder if Joe tells a happy story or a sob story. Maybe Joe we'll is on know. an island now, sipping pina colada. Yeah, you know, definitely. watching I'm the world that much. That's yeah. crazy. Well, awesome. Uh, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Troy is an absolute stalwart of GI Joeberg and a good friend. So wonderful. Totally. And uh, just uh, on that um, on that vein. We are missing uh, Law and Order and Psych Out and Tunnel Rats. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we're missing them. So, Troy, I, I know you're friends with them. So, maybe you can bring them back on the show. It'll be great to hear from them again. Um, MC Max DJ. lost his collection, presumably, uh, to disaster. Like Who? a roof cave in. Oh, my Comstock. word. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the thing with Matt is that his parents, so Matt was an only child, and his parents each had their own little sections in the attic um, where they could kind of like display their, you know, their, their own passions and things. So he asked, you know, uh, you know, mom, you have your section for your decorations, dad, you have your section for hunting and fishing gear, why can't I get a section for myself? And they agreed. Matthew set up an entire incredible diorama space where he kind of like put all the toys that he owned out. Mm. Um, and as he, he says, he's very an good OG care fan. Of his original, he, he took exceptional yeah. good care of his original collection. But everything was out there. And then, unfortunately, um, yes, a year or so later, so once he set everything up, it's all amazing. It's, it looks incredible. There was a very bad ice storm that caused part of their roof to cave in. Mm. And of course, where does it cave in? It caves into the section of his section of the attic. Um, oh. So his dad had to act quick, so he packed everything up as carefully as he could, but his main goal was to avoid any further damage to the house. And then during this process, about everything got covered in dust and shingle particles, and it's been that way ever since. Hmm. Last time the mat was up there, most of the figures were doing their best to Darth Maul impression, dry, rotted O-rings. <laughs> 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 and you probably ask yourself, why, haven't, why hasn't he rescued them earlier? He says life just gets in the way. Kind of like life is getting in the way right now. He won't be here listening uh, live to us because Matthew and Sydney are in Maryland celebrating, a, doing a joint birthday celebration. Happy birthday, Matt. Happy birthday, Sydney. I hope you enjoyed Nando's. Um, uh, <laughs> as Matthew puts it, you can take the girl, girl out of South Africa. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, South Africa so Matthew... Out of the girl. Has he lost his collection? He's not sure. Maybe he has, maybe he hasn't. Um, but he's going to be spending some time soon looking over everything, trying to see what, you know, what's happening, everything. And hopefully... Matt, with... in your position, I would be getting my folks to go up there and, like, with detail, like, video document everything with their phones. Like, I just... think that would be absolutely incredible. <laughs> yeah, just would, make it a oh, whole no, documentary. I, I would... No, I would just, fa like, FaceTime them or something. Just, like... Okay, mom, uh, we've spoken enough. Can you uh, go upstairs and just like, just flip the camera so that, you know, you can show me the stuff. I, I need to determine the level of the damage here. Because I don't know, I would not be able to sleep at night with my collection in jeopardy. It's crazy. I mean, he, he does say um, he hopes, part of him hopes that just some, you know, TLC and patience will allow him to restore everything to his former glory. Because Dude. he was always very careful with them. He took any of the vehicles. He never took any of them in the water or allowed any of his friends to play rough with them. So we'll, he said he's going to see. He's going to keep us posted. Um, and he'll let us know. Uh, I would literally, I would actually go and enlist the services of a local university's archaeological team. <laughs> like, no, I'm not even being like, I'm being half funny. But like those students, I mean, like if they can go in there with brushes and do a proper excavation for them, it would be good experience for them, especially if they like lecturer can come in and assess it and go, yeah, actually that would be good, you know, excavation, pr um, like practice for you guys. 
Anyway, well, that's just, you know... Judging by the tone of Matt's message, he doesn't seem too upset, which perhaps is the greatest positive to pull out of this. For a mm. guy who took absolute best care of his childhood collection and to have a total act of God happen to effect, as far as we know, destroy them completely, you know, wreck them from, from their minty childhood preser preserved condition to having a cave-in of a roof on them. Like, chances are they're not in great shape. But Matt is a... Uh, he's a roll with the punches kind of guy, it seems, because yeah, like I say, and chip it, it doesn't it doesn't erase all him. of that fun he had, you know, setting mm. this all up, you know, as mm. as a youngster, you know, kind of like putting all the figures where he needs them to be, um, kind of creating. But let like, me not put words in the man's the mouth. Dire. Maybe maybe he's just putting on a brave face, and it really does bug him. It would certainly bug me. Well, he's but, gonna um, he's gonna. There's nothing that I could do. If um, my family home in South Africa was to suddenly burn to the ground, all of a sudden... Touch yes, wood, don't speak of it. <laughs> there, there would be some very expensive plastic puddles in one uh, corner of the house. Yeah. <laughs> just wow. the entire room, just this, this plastic case. I don't, I don't want to... <laughs> I'm not even visualizing that. Plastic. No, nope, black and me. swirl that, uh, that is the final resting place of, of a flag. <laughs> Making sweet, sweet, eternal oh, no. love with a defiant. Uh, yeah. and all the Fox figures and together. MCC <laughs> vehicles. All those years that they were split into on the shelves are all now one year. One year. No, now you got me thinking of it. Like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> <It's magic. laughs> oh, here's, here's, here's something that I remembered while we were mid chat. Like, my parents never said, "Oh, so what are you going to do with your toys? Do you want to do you want to maybe sell them?" They never they never planted that seed. What they said instead was, you should open a toy museum. Like, charge at Yes. Mission. Love okay. you, folks. Anyways, guys, I think we are going to leave it there. We do have some more responses, but I think we kind of canvassed the typical ways these stories ended. Like, you either left for college, had a life, and your folks got rid of your childhood things in the interim. Heartbreaking. In fact, they're all heartbreaking. Or natural disaster or you thought better of it after outgrowing this let me get rid of them or girl or boy whatever you're into uh <laughs> you decided that adults adult pursuits were better than your childhood childhood gotta ones. be more mature uh what other reasons oh paul you decided to uh take uh what is it a sid approach to things instead of an andy approach? customize the crap out of them yeah there you go you you made some some I hate that movie. Joes. <laughs> well i appreciate well, all these every different customizer stories. is that character right yeah for yeah. sure but, i mean um, I, i'm glad there was a large variety of stories it's not the same story over and over again mm. um and people really do have their own stories to tell when it comes to losing collections or even gaining connections collections Connection. right and also we got a great one from mcdj acdc for to open us up for the for the next episode then because yeah, uh, i don't want to rush through his because it's pretty cool we do not want to lose the this collection of replies so we're going to definitely keep going into them in the next episode and also let's uh you know there's one more celebration to have as well birthday wise uh it's uh it was ryan sweeney's birthday this past week as well hey so a massive happy birthday to ryan sweeney happy birthday ryan yo and birthday yeah, yeah so happy birthday man i hope it was awesome um my correspondence with him tells me it was so but you know it's cool to like shout it out on the show Heck um, yeah dude and happy birthday again to matthew and sydney hope you guys are having yeah. a great time <laughs> don't happy eat birthday, too much guys. nando's yeah, it gives you the power. Um, <laughs> uh, also, I'd just like to on the side say uh, thank you so much for the response to the um, most recent tune I released, which is my uh, cute song, uh, which is the, the piece of music I use at the end of unboxings when I dance with my dog. <laughs> cute mm -hmm. Step, the outro song. Uh, you guys, uh, your reactions and responses to it have been amazing. I'm, of course, referring to the Bergforce. That's our Patreon members um, who have exclusive access to that kind of stuff um, because I can't release it out into the wild, but at least I can give it to the Bergforce so long. And um, it's great because you guys seem to be enjoying it. And if I get any feedback, 
um, that is you know, constructive or whatever, so I can use that before I put it on the internet and get bombed to hell. So guys, I really appreciate, you know, that you guys listen to the tunes and I really love making them for you. There are two new ones that are queued up. Um, so stand by for that. Uh, there's some cool stuff coming our way. Uh, there is a video, as I'd mentioned before, uh, which I would have liked to have had before this show because it would have helped with the story as well. But I can save that story for the next episode, which is great. And yeah, and yeah, that's right. You're sitting there and you're going, but Paul, how do I join the Patreon? Well, guys, just check out the link in the description below. Uh, it's, it's, it's there. It'll take you to the Patreon. Um, and we got some cool merch. Uh, big shout out to Ronald. He just, um, he received his prize because he also sent us a very cool uh, Dreadnought picture. Um, and he managed to make it just in time. And nice. he got himself a very cool uh, Cobra... God, I don't even know what I call them anymore. Snake Diver. I think that's what Eel. I call them. Eels. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but then but then technically not eels, but he got the version 2 eels. He's also, Ronnie, you're the first person I know of that has that shirt. So go you. And it printed so well. It's really, really cool. Um, if this is sounding super sexy to anybody listening, uh, go and check it out. Uh, it's in our description below as well. You can go and check out our merch store on Teespring. It's uh, G.I. Joe Berg, the merch, but the link is in the description as well if you want to grab some cool teas. If you want to get a hold of the show, check us out on a real South African hero at gmail.com or just about anywhere we are social. Please note, anything you say or do can be quoted on a future podcast, so watch out. Heck yeah. Or we'll, you know, completely reconstruct what you said. But it, it'll <laughs> definitely be on here. <laughs> <laughs> we will put words in your mouth. Uh, guys, uh, I've had a blast. Thank you. This is Heck great yeah. to revel in people's pain. <laughs> <laughs> and and great it seems stories. like Elliot managed to stay asleep, or is he still staring at you? Bro, he's done several 360s in his cot, but he's still asleep. Heck Good yeah, boy. dude. He's amazing. I love this He kid. knew you were recording. He's like, okay, I'll, I'll give Dad a, a break for now. Like, normally he'd want to feed, so I'd have to whip my boobs out. But <laughs> 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 Amazing kid. Yeah. Kids are the best. Yeah. And I've got, to add, no. I've got to add one of those to my collection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, but cool, guys. Thanks, yeah, it has been awesome. Thanks for joining me again, boys. Uh, this, is, this is my happy time. This is my happy place. You are my yeah. friends, both we you two Saffers and, you know, the community that surrounds us. Uh, this is, you know, in difficult times, this has always been a refuge to me. So, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us through thick and thin. G.I. Joburg, man, we'll be here forever. Thank you yeah. for being a friend. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I just can't remember that tune, sorry. Down again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a pal and confident. And if you feel the body, and I'm not everyone you knew. Cobra! And the card attached would say thank you for being a friend. StreamYard, you need to up your game because Rob and I are falling out of sync, and that's on you, bro. Because we come on, StreamYard, do it right, do it right. Yo, man. Otherwise, StreamYard, we're gonna say bye, 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 yo, because Rob and I are in sync. <laughs> <laughs> now that oh, brings back memories well, Ooh, hopefully they enjoyed it live our live audience All right, enjoyed we're it out you hogs. cool guys and thanks to the Berg Force love Heck you all yeah, dudes. Cheers, cheers. don't end the broadcast don't end the broadcast um, I won't Hans what's a Safa a Safa is I believe it's slang for South African but no South African I know uses that term yeah so it's I, I would probably wager it's the aussies responsible for that mm. um, because they love to shorten things man every other day i hear a new um like truncated word like afternoon is arvo a bottle store is a bottle <laughs> uh, an ambulance is an ambo <laughs> um what is it a, 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 a parking spot they just call it a park uh man i'm looking for a park Hi, guys. You're looking, you're looking for Arthur, a did you see the Ambo park, uh, uh, 
parked at the bottle-o. <laughs> it's an amber in the park. park.